we're talking about a variety of things. Um, first of all, uh, we've had huge steps forward with uh, the processor side environment. So uh, what we're trying to do is allow people to work on the FPGA uh, downlink for the spacecraft um, in in Vitus or or something similar. And all of that workflow has been worked out so so we can write uh, code in the IDE for the ZC706. But what we found out yesterday and the day before, uh, day before we really didn't know what was going on, but definitely yesterday it, it, was, it became very clear that the ZC, on the ZC706, so the ARV9371, that the encoder, once it's hooked up in the HDL, we can't access it through DMA. So we get a bus error. This bus error message is not obvious in Vitus, which is um, disappointing, um, but we can see it clearly when we log in to the target and we're not really sure what's going on. So we thought maybe it was because the, uh, the encoder was in the AMBA PL uh, part of the device tree instead of under AXI, but it looks like that that's really a red herring, that that's not the case because very similar results on the Pluto with the working um, encoder and a working transmitter um, that it's it's all, almost the same situation. So that's, that's not the problem. So we've done something in the process to, to make it impossible to uh, use DMA with the encoder on the ZC706 when I think it's working fine on the Pluto. So that's where we were at as of uh, last night. So I, I sent along, uh, at least in Slack, the system block diagram from Vivado of how it's hooked up on the ZC706. And this is provisional because we um, we hooked up like the, the, the slave and the master AXI stream, and we hooked up all of the signals that we think we know about. We're concerned about a signal that we have hooked up to the DAC FIFO um, that does not exist. It's not hooked up at all in the Pluto implementation, but that could just simply be because there is no DAC FIFO. Um, so there might be some additional work to get to get it things integrated into the reference design from ADI for the 9371 that didn't have to happen on the 9361. So I can, I can put that stuff here uh, in either, I can either include it in chat or I can put it on the screen. Um, but we definitely need some help <laughs> to get the, to get the re excellent results, the amazing results from the Pluto and the 9361. 61. We want to duplicate that for the 9371 on the ZC706, and we also want to carry that forward onto the ultra scale. Um, and I haven't even started looking at the ZCU uh, 106 or any of the ultra scale devices. They, the ultra scale devices, though, have a lot in common with the Zinc 7000 series and that they're JSD 204B interface. So they have largely the same architecture as the 7000 series zinc. So let me know what you need to see. Okay, I just, <clears throat> I just tried to uh, analyze the, the PDF um, uh, on the design. So right now the DVBS two encoder uh, is only connected on the S axis light. There is no input, neither output of uh, data, right? Oh no, that should okay. So that's that's probably <laughs> I probably gave you the wrong thing. The okay. in the bitstream, what we did is we connected up. Okay, you know what? Let me let me get the diagram on how it's hooked up for the current bitstream. Yeah. And what I'm doing is I'm going to go to Slack and get the same thing, the, the same thing that I posted there.
Is anyone speaking? Oh, hi. Hi, Anshul. No, uh, sorry, we're trying to find the diagram of the how the uh, encoder is hooked up on the ZC706. Because okay. I, I put it, I thought I put it on FPGA. I'm looking yeah, for it right can. now. Because I tried to generate the system block diagram um, to show how it's currently hmm. hooked up. Uh, and it turns out it's not right. So it only has the the uh, light interface hooked up in the yeah. export that I did, but I'm kind of concerned because that is, that's oh, there we go. Okay, I found the right. <sighs> I think I'm just going to put this in the, this is this what I showed last week and I'm just going to download it. And then I'm going to put it here. In, I'm going to share it on the screen from again yeah if we can get help yes <laughs> yeah no i think it's got to be something simple that we're doing okay mm -hmm. here we go all right so now i'm going to share it sorry for the delay here uh okay first i probably need to open it oh i don't want to end the meeting no 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 how do i cancel out of it okay no, how do you cancel out of wanting to... Okay, there we go. There's the X. All right, hang on. <sighs> All right, good. Okay, opening it up in preview. And that should give me a chance to share it here. And I'll have multiple people share. So... So that other people can share things. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. I know the font's kind of small. So the the thing in the top is how it the reference design is set up. So we have a transmit DMA controller. Understandable. We we now understand what it does, and the default hardware um, uh, reference design from analog devices re has a 64-bit read from DDR memory and then produces a 128-bit wide stream that goes off the DAC FIFO and then goes downstream. And what it's assuming that it's getting is two channels uh, for because we have two transmitters, zero and one, and it gets 32 bits for channel one and then 30, or sorry, 32 bits for channel zero, 32 bits for channel one, 16-bit IQ. Um, and so our job was to figure out how to do the correct bus sizing and then fit the encoder in. And so that, that's how we chose to do it on the bottom. So we dropped the encoder in between the transmit DMA and the DAC FIFO, which left the um, master AXI stream transfer request line connected from the transmit DMA controller off to the DAC FIPO because I wasn't really sure what else to do with it. In the Pluto design, this is not connected. The signal doesn't exist. Um, or it, the signal exists. The the pins exist, but it's not connected in the Pluto. Probably because there isn't a DAC FIFO. The DVB encoder connects directly up to uh, RRC um, interpolator. So we dropped the DVB encoder in here, and this is the connections. And then the, this particular bit file was exported, and this XA, XSA is what we're using. And now I have no idea why the uh, exported board system board diagram doesn't show this. And so I'll maybe that's the problem. I don't know. But in any case, the problem that we're having doesn't have anything to do with any of the stream connections. It has everything to do with the light X or light connection, the um, Axi light connection is from the uh, processor to the encoder and that is yep. that's set up uh, for sure in the tackle script in the board treckle script so we should be able to talk to the encoder from the processor side just like anything else with any sort of other axi interface we're able to talk to the dx to the transmit dma controller no problem we can write and read from it no reads or writes for the DB, dvb encoder are working from uh, from essentially from the processor side right now. So we've done something s probably stupid or silly or, mm. you know, it, it is in the device tree. Um, you know, you, so we, no, you, you don't need to have a device, device tree on that, as there is no kernel module. Um, right. 
as uh, you will access it directly via DevMem. Uh, okay, so that's, no... that's, that's what we're using. So DevMem shows nothing. And yeah. a, a memory yeah. map, uh, so the memory map actually seems to succeed, but then when you when you actually use the memory map in C uh, with the little yeah. very simple C program, it gives the bus error. Okay. Um, so, you... I mean, we're new at this, so or at least I am speaking for myself. I know that Anshul <laughs> is more, <laughs> more up to date with this, but I was kind of shocked. I'm like expecting to get register reads and writes back from this yeah it could it could happen if for example the the clock is not the uh, is well on the preto there is two clocks one for the the adc the ac and one uh for the processor one is uh, at uh 100 megahertz and the other is at i can't remember uh, yeah i saw that there are two clocks in your design yeah. for the pluto yeah. and i think we just have one hooked up here okay you have only one so... only yes it's only one there's one clock hooked up there's a reset hooked up and then there's the yeah. axi light interface back to the processor okay um so can you show me the design or is it the, what you have exported uh, without any string? Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about the fact that the thing that I just sent you, I didn't even look at it, I just shipped it out. I went to Vivado in what uh -huh. I thought was the right directory and exported the board, um, the diagram. Well, so what, what could... Um, some well um on on some mistakes i i already made uh, in the past it's for example um <laughs> i don't know if <laughs> i understand um for example you uh, modify the bitstream uh, on vivado but when you make it uh through uh, i think that you use uh, peta linux or when you, yes. Yeah, we're using Petalinux. That's correct. Yeah. Um, when I used uh, on the Pluto build route, and um, uh, the problem is that uh, the the design is uh, is done uh, from the tickle curl and not from the design. Uh, well, if you if you modify the design on Vivado, um, if you rebuild all. Then it used the T TCL of uh, of the project, so <gasps> um, uh, so you need. Oh, you need, okay. You have to, you have that... to be sure that you have to be sure that the the tickle is okay. And, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, the tackle only hooks up the clock and the reset right now. So does that mean that it the when it that it replaces well, what I do when I draw um, design, when I draw well, lines in the in the yeah well when you you draw lines and uh, if you you have already a firmware and you upload the bitstream um, uh, directly well on live on the, the well on the firmware you you use the tickle okay and. Uh, you can you can uh, upload some uh, new bitstream uh, on live, but as soon as you remake all that, uh, it uses the tickle, so not. Oh, your, okay, your gotcha. Okay. okay, now okay. okay, so that that makes sense because that means it won't work. The, like the stream, the master and slave stream for the data won't work. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the okay. but our interface to the encoder the the control registers from the processor yeah. should still work right yeah yeah because that's in the yeah. tackle the that connection yeah. the light the axa light the and yeah. one clock and and one reset then and, and we see that like when you make this and you call it up in vivado all of that is magically there and yeah. then i drew the rest of them but it didn't take because it goes back to the the board tackle yeah, yeah exactly 
Okay, that yeah. helps a lot. I think we know what we need to do. So we need to fix the tackle and then redo the whole. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah. I see the path forward. But like, yeah. I'm concerned because yeah. the problem that we're talking about is is not, it would still be there. Yeah, um, just, uh, I just uh, uh, explain my mistake at first is I, uh, well, how I work, but it's not, it's, not maybe the best way that uh, <laughs> that's okay usually, <laughs> you're uh, usually i uh, met the tickle and then i i i put a make then i have an xpr i i, I open it on vivalo and uh, be sure that all the connection i did on, on tickle is okay if not uh, if there is some missing uh, lines then i plugged uh, this missing line, see how the tickle is, uh, well, what what is the line uh, to uh, to modify, uh, well, on Vivado, when you uh, put the line, then you have some tickle uh, truss, uh, mm, well, some uh, script, I don't remember, you have a tickle console. Yeah. And then it, it helps to, um, uh, to write uh, the tickle script. So uh, when when there are some missing lines, I usually uh, copy the what what I what I write in design. Well, with Vivado, I I uh, I copy it to the tickle. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't know if it is clear, but. Uh, no, no, it, it, it's very clear. I, I see, I see where we have um, done the same the, thing. Yeah, we the, both have done the same thing. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, we, no, we've made all. I've made all these changes in the schematic, you know, yeah. in yeah. the block diagram, thinking that yeah. okay, then when I say yeah. say you know make bitstream, yeah. that the, what yeah. that that's yes. what's being. Yeah, um, yeah. You, you have you have the bitstream. It's okay, but as soon as you re you make. Uh, yeah. The it build, then it used the original tickle. And, yeah, uh, and I did that. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, the the other way is to export tickle. Yeah, when you have uh, made some modification on the Vivado okay, design, cool. you can export it. Mm -hmm. uh, the only issue is that it exports uh, in a not very clean uh, way. Okay. Which means that. Uh, uh, well, it is uh, not scrambled, but uh, it's not very easy to read. So usually I try to uh, uh, make the tickle uh, by by hand. Gotcha. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So you, so yeah. yeah, you can you can draw all of these lines, and you yeah. can make your thing, and you can export to tackle, yeah. but it's yeah. uh, but it's ugly. So it's best yes, to, read, to just it's like book. it will exactly. work, yeah. but then. Yeah. Then somebody but, else coming after you yeah, will yeah, have it, a harder it, time. It, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, got it. Okay, I think we know how to fix that. But why can't we talk to the encoder with through the AXI light interface? Um, okay. Uh, so Do now. Do you want to I share? Uh, sh shall I share my screen? I have Evad open, or Michelle, if you have open. Yes, anyway. please. Yeah, no, go uh, go ahead, Anshul. Uh, then I need to log out from here and log into the meeting from other PC. I'll yeah, okay. Just do that a minute. Yeah, okay. yeah, go ahead. We'll we'll keep talking. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. I w so yeah, well, I think we have a different problem with the, or I don't know if it's different, but I think we have a different problem with not being able to talk to the encoder through the AXI light yeah. interface. Uh, the the other. Mm, idea i don't know if um uh, how did you choose the the address of the dvs2 encoder um this was does anybody know where the address came from paul do you remember it's always been 44 ab 8000 it was uh that was in the vivado that was in the hdl it was in yeah well you <laughs> Well, this is how I work, but <laughs> again, I, I'm not uh, I'm not an expert. Uh, so when I uh, include um, 
at the UBS Twin Caller. Uh, then I run um, uh, interconnect with the CPU. Yeah. And then and then it gives you an address, and then I use this address on the decor. Yeah. I'm assuming that that's what happened for us because yeah. this was just what was, this is what the ZC706 wanted. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So here is the design. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So can, can you zoom a little? Yeah. In the, yes. In the yeah. Okay, so right now, Right now, there is no, okay, there, right. there is no stream. Yeah, yeah, that's how it gets placed from Onshul's repository. So you can see that the AXI okay. light interface is, is called out in the Tekel script. The Tekel yeah, script yeah. has the clock and the reset, and you can see all of that showing up there. Yep. Yeah. So we should be able to get some register reads and writes from this. Yeah. Uh, the only, okay, another thing. So I think it's maybe uh, a question to Shuto, but um, I use right now the, uh, there is several uh, version of the F, uh, of the Incola. Yes. I use the, the Pluto uh, trial branch, but uh, I think that Shuto has merged to the master, uh, uh, all the modification which have been done uh, with the Pluto SDL trial. Uh, that could be also an, um, uh, another difference, but uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so we should check that. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, and other thing, Everest, if that helps, I can give you access to my PC if you want to check anything yourself, if that helps you, like we did earlier. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, could be an idea. Yeah. Yeah, if we can catch whatever we've done wrong to, to yes. make it impossible, because like, so I was really, I guess I was really surprised when you know, because you do the dev mem in C on the C side. You know, you mm -hmm. set up your file handler, I guess, or or memory handler, and then you go to memory map and you memory map the same address that you get from the HDL. You know, you go look it up, and every the, we can talk all day to the TXDMA, and we can write mm -hmm. to the scratch register, and everything yeah. works fine. But like yeah. every we get a bus error every time for our own IP. But we have this AXI light interface, and I'm but, pretty sure that that's yeah. the interface that communicates to the control registers and config registers. So, it, uh, we, so we've what? done so we've done something wrong, like in maybe in Pet Linux, or. Mm. Ex exporting maybe i mean but I, I can't find anything i mean we followed the general instructions yep. for doing this and and maybe oh. there's something adi specific because we have to use the um special yocto layers for meta adi so i'm i'm just looking for anything i don't see anything obvious <laughs> in the difference between pluto and us but then i'm not really familiar with the processor side for pluto as much as e i am with the hdl side yeah, Michelle, it, it's it's a simple problem. The registers are mapped, and we should be able to access it. Yeah. So uh, the layers, we, we can keep them separate. But they they won't interfere. We can see IO map. We can see the addresses. But something again, yeah, we can't access it. So something small. Okay. Um. What I don't know if uh, if. Well, as there is no uh, data stream input and output, I don't know if uh, uh, even you, 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 you normally theoretically uh, can read the register. I don't know if uh, oh. the design of the DB, uh, of the encoder uh, oh. needs some okay. some thing. I, I don't know. I don't know. All right, uh, that's a no, no, that's a that's a good idea. That we should just. Go, we should go fix that first and then try it again. And that might clear it up. Well, I, I could, what I is could it? Can you explain in detail? Yeah. I so could what, try what, also uh, on the on the Pluto side to uh, remove the uh, 
the stream data and try to uh, read the register. But uh, well, that's um, yeah, that's another option. I don't know exactly because yeah, normally just the axilite should uh, be enough. Yeah, but you're. Yeah, so Anshul, what he's what he's suggesting mm -hmm. is that because mm -hmm. we don't have the streams hooked up, that that might be preventing it from reporting anything to the AXI Lite interface. Okay. Even though I thought we had hooked it up, because I hooked it up in laboriously, hooked it up in the um, in the uh, in the schematic, and then I mm -hmm. but then I exported the bitstream, and if it rebuilds. Uh, if, if Avado calls all those tackle scripts, then it just overwrites what I've done mm -hmm. with, with what you have in that board tackle. So if we could just go back and put our new connections into the tackle script, um, and maybe at the same time, just let, let let we could just go ahead and and put in the additional files that are missing, and then that mm -hmm. means that your repository does it all, and mm -hmm. then so it's it's all summarized in the issue yep. on your repository. Yep. If we Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can try to do it. I just don't know how to. I don't know how to to get the files to show up. Uh, but I think I can probably edit the the hard coded directory things. Um, and we can. And now we know the connections that we need to do uh, yep. from the diagram. So if we add the board connections into mm -hmm. the, that particular tackle script, mm -hmm. and then redo all of this, if we still get the same problem, then it's some other problem. Mm -hmm. um, but we should probably go ahead and do that first. I think we could probably yeah. do that today. Yep, uh, I will edit it. Don't worry about it. I will make it clean. Uh, do you, you know how? I I don't yeah, know yeah. how to do all of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, will, I will do it. Yeah. Was the issue? Is the things in the issue clear enough, or is there anything else that you need from me? No, I think combined with the issue list, uh, issue list and what you have shared in Slack, it's clear. Okay. Yeah. If there's anything else, just let me know. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, as whenever you're done with that, then what I'll do is I'll clone your repository, make everything, mm -hmm. follow, go through the whole mm -hmm. uh, Ped Linux build. It, it, at this point, I think we're pretty good with that process. Um, oh, yes. Then, yeah, so whenever, whenever that's ready, I'll test it again and then report mm -hmm. back. And if we still have a problem with being able to access it, then we, we've at least narrowed it down by a huge mm -hmm. amount. Uh, so um, bef just uh, want to express that instead of that, can I make uh, this new tackle script based on the connections that we have made? Yeah. Test it out, and then I can uh, improve all on the changes that we have that we are talking on the Slack. That way, we, we will be sure that because we both are at the same page, we have our connections and everything. Repository is building. I will try to get a new tackle script, uh, see if the error goes, and then I will improve on all the hard coded path and everything. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, dive uh, right in. If, if, yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. Everest, do you need access to my machine? Or um, anytime? Yeah, I can I can try to uh, yeah, any help, yes. Review uh, quickly if there is a big, big mistake, but uh, yep. um, I think that your plan is okay to uh, yes, to write uh, uh, a tickle mm. which is complete and um, try to have uh, well, uh, for example, uh, a design that I can clone easily. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, exactly, well, it could help also uh, other person to uh, replicate. replicate. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I tried to do with the Pluto. I think that it's working. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe you can uh, you can uh, inspire of uh, how I, I did it. Maybe mm -hmm. it's not the best way, but uh, I think that uh, the, the firmware is complete, mm -hmm. even with the uh, HDL and uh, all the, uh, yes, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that Tickle uh, could be a good idea as mm -hmm. soon as you uh, put your firmware. And mm -hmm. uh, I. Uh, yeah, I, I can uh, I can review uh, on your PC remotely. Awesome, thank you. Awesome. Okay. Is there any any opinions about the the master AXI stream XFER request line that comes from D from TXDMA and it goes off to the DAC FIFO? This is not connected up 
in the Pluto design, no. but it, but we have it, I've left it in place, but I'm concerned that this signal is going to screw us up. Does anybody know anything about it? I, I know enough, like from the, from the documentation that it goes high when there is a request, when there's a DMA going on. But now that we have yeah. logic mm -hmm. in between, I'm concerned that there's going to be some, some, we're going to cut ourselves off. Is there any advice? Do we just like d delete the signal or do we have to keep it? I'm worried that the DAC FIFO won't work without it. Mm. You see it? Like it was, it's in the design and it's in the little uh, diagram. Like I wasn't sure what to do with it. So I kept it connected from the, from the DMA up to the DAC FIFO. We're not the only people confused about it either. Like yep. on engineer zone at ADI, there was somebody that was like, what the heck does this do? And, mm -hmm. and it turns out it goes high uh, when there's a DMA request and it stays high as long as there's a DMA request. But now that we have logic in the middle, um, I'm worried that it'll, it'll deassert before we're done with the, um, yep. the encoder. And you don't have the signal hooked up at all in the Pluto, and it seems to work just no. fine. So, yeah. <laughs> like, but, the, but you go from DMA to encoder to the RRC interpolator. You don't go through a FIFO for DAC. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm worried. We might So we might have to add some logic here, but I'm not sure yet. And, and it could just be nothing. It could just be a, an advisory signal to the DAC FIFO. I'm not really sure what to do with it. This signal is actually included in the stream, AXI stream block, you know, so it's like it's 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 included with all the rest of them. But it goes to this thing called DMA X for request. And so I have I've looked at the source code of both blocks and I'm I'm not confident that it's um, that it's something we can disconnect, but I'm not confident that it's something that's gonna wreck us. So if you're so I just like to keep an eye out for this because mm. I just I left it hooked up. It looked important, and I don't know what to do with it, or if we have to manipulate the signal or incorporate it in any way. I'd like to use it if we have to. Um, so I, it's it's not responsible. The signal is not responsible for the problems we're currently having. But I I'm looking forward uh, a couple of days from now, you know, when we're triumphant and victorious and everything <laughs> is working, you know, <laughs> and then we go, why is it cutting off? Our transmission yeah. too early then you know if we have to uh, take care of this then we'll, at least we'll know so that's the only signal that i wasn't really sure about how to connect up yeah so, maybe if if we don't have any any clue right now once we have the basic things working we can again <laughs> ask this question to adi <laughs> yeah we have this yes it's dropping so yeah yeah. Okay. Let's just plan on that. I'm yeah. not, so I'll keep it hooked up the way it is yes. right now, you know, but like, uh, like I don't want to say that every design works just fine Yeah. With, <laughs> without this signal <laughs> at all. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it might not be optional for us, but I don't know yet. And it's, uh, so if, if you feel uh, confident enough to go plow through HDL uh, source code, you can see where it is. Uh, I think I cut and pasted some some notes to Slack, but yeah, uh, that's just something. This is one of the things I'm trying to track and worry about. Cool. Okay, I think we have a plan. This is great. Um, so yeah, if you if you need to drop off the call uh, from from here, uh, fine. Uh, so so what I'd like to talk about next is uh, Remote Lab South uh, FPGA stations and development and capital expenses and planning for. For the for that particular lab uh, with James. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please stay on the call. And if not, then have a wonderful uh, morning or evening, wherever you are. And we will uh, uh, be able, be posting updates for our next uh, set of action items and experiments uh, as soon as we possibly can. Okay, nice. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. This is uh, fantastic. It's a privilege to work with all of you wonderful, competent people. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and very soon, we're going to be working with a, a working downlink, and then we'll have to work on the scheduler, which is yep. how do we feed it, and what quality of service decisions do we make, and all of that wonderful adaptive coding and modulation magic will happen, and it will be just as hard. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> will be all sorts of problems to happen there. Oh, I should probably say before you go that we do have Vitus working on the ZC706. <laughs> so the problem that we have with ChocoCat and probably with Karapi as well is that when you're in Vitus, if you're going to use Vitus, the IDE from, from Xilinx for the processor side, um, that the when you go to create project platform, which is required before you get mm. to the, your application programming, and you'll notice that if you use the drop down menu and click on it, nothing happens. And if you go to the graphical user interface and you say create project platform, nothing happens. And that is a known problem. <laughs> no, with the book, it's known. There are dozens of people complaining about it on the web and there's a workaround. So instead of using the graphical user interface, you have to use the command line, which is platform create, and then a whole bunch of stuff that you have to. So what I'm going to do is add it to our uh, repository yep. readme for how to use FPGAs. Uh, so I've got a, a work a workflow that works. So you have to do the project platform creation first, and then you can use all of the usual stuff in Vitus <laughs> for creating an application. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, thank you to Engineer Zone, Stack Overflow, Google for Google search for for all the different uh, items. Um, so so you can get through with a with a command line uh, thing, and it it just goes to show you that um, the big companies with their proprietary tools have bad bugs that you know we can't help fix. <laughs> and you know it's it's uh, it's just a a, a note. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll make sure that that is in the um, that's in our documentation so that you're not flummoxed or or sidelined by that because um and oh if you do go straight to the create application first which is what i did the other day thinking that you just have to create an application on the processor side if you don't do the project platform first you'll crash the zc706 and it will be bricked for some Ooh. reason so that's what happened Anshul, when you said that you couldn't find the target mm -hmm. it's because i tried to run an application and it just crashed and i didn't understand wow. why and mm -hmm. didn't think of it so i repeated it after you talked to me and sure enough you can you can completely brick uh the zc706 by going straight to application so all of this i'll i'll make sure it's written down uh just a little just yet another learning opportunity for us, <laughs> you know, but once you yeah. get the platform creation, if you just do the whole thing, then you're all of a sudden you're in a debugger and you got, uh, you got access to the ZC706 and that's what we'll probably be using to write the scheduler and all of the multiplexing software yeah. to connect the uplink and downlink. So, right. okay. So anyway, that's the, that's the hmm. big win for this week. It was a lot of work, but we're pretty confident that's the way to do it. Uh, and yeah, see you on Slack and uh, and next week, same time. Sure. And uh, just one last one. This uh, right is, did you install it on PS side or it's on the host that's connected to the zinc? Oh, it's all on the host. So this it's is all on the host. It's all on the host. It's all hmm. cross compilation. It's all, it all magically works because you've included the XSA file. You've incorporated all of the, what you need to know. So you're not having to write code on the host. Now you can, if you want to, but you have to go back to Pedal Linux and include a C environment and then in Petal Linux and then reboot it mm -hmm. with that. And it's a very, very rudimentary C environment on the host. Mm -hmm. yep. And it doesn't yep. have any of the libraries and it's not a great experience. And the debugger is very, very rudimentary. Not on the host, on the on PS, you mean. Petal Linux C environment on the PS side. Yes. But yeah, right. this is so all a, yeah, the Vitus runs on ChocoCat. On ChocoCat, yes. That makes or, it. Yeah. Yeah, is that right? Yes. Yeah, hmm. yes. Karapi okay. is the Pluto. <laughs> yes. So Vitus is just it's it's parallel to Vivado. Yeah. And it's yep. it's essentially the SDK for, for yep. um for Vivado. So it runs all on ChocoCat and then hmm. and then when you run the debugger, if you set it up, you know, hmm. with the with the a couple of steps, then you set it hmm. up, then it's deploying the ELF hmm. file directly to the the uh, ZC706. ZC706, and right. Apart from mentioning the steps in the readme, uh, have you pasted on the Slack also? I uh, I think so. Uh, I did. They are not complete. Not no, I did not do no, the, okay. all of the complete steps because it was there's a lot of things that were um, experimental. But yeah, it, it's we're now confident, and so I'm going to put it. I'll put all of it on Slack and also on the yes. readme's. And it's it's just it's a good way to do it because it gives you a pretty powerful IDE, uh, not yeah. perfect, uh, but 
uh, you know, because we've noticed that some of the, <clears throat> like, the, for example, the bus error message that we mm -hmm. were talking about mm -hmm. did not show up in the um, debugger. It just, oh. just, it just halts. It just stops, and it doesn't give you the same error oh. message that you see when you're logged into the ZC. Yes. So if you log into the ZC706 and you run that same ELF file yep. that you yep. just created, then you mm. get the bus error message, and you mm -hmm. get some useful error messages. So it's disappointing that uh, Vitus mm. does not show you this. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is a way to show it, I haven't found it out yet. So I apologize to anybody out there listening to this that's a big fan of Vitus and knows how to do this. If you have advice for us, we would like to hear it. Uh, you know, so <laughs> let us know where we're wrong. Uh, but it, it just stops. It just hmm. halts. Uh, just so stops. and you have to kind of figure it out from looking at the registers, which you can. Mm -hmm. You can you can tell that it's not working when you dig mm -hmm. in. So, yeah, I'll make sure that all that's documented. That's that's an action item for me. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Happy to help. All right. See you soon. Yeah. All right, James, thanks so much for hanging in there. Uh, Hey, tell us. I, I know it's uh, it's probably hot there. And um, have you had any thunderstorms? And uh, we are we have funding lined up, and I think we're just waiting for documentation for uh, just to make it uh, really clean and easy for the 501c3 to fund the lab work. Uh, that and is that is all all correct. It's been pretty hot here, but. Uh... You have the advantage of architecture and air conditioning all built for this kind of weather. So it's been pretty good <laughs> until the dog goes, but it's been 15 minutes since I went outside. So now I must go outside for the next half hour. I'm like, dog, please, no. <laughs> um, yeah, very good. Understand. Yeah, we, we've been doing pretty well. Not many storms, actually, has been kind of to our deficit because we haven't had much rain. And the air is incredibly wet and the, gris and the dr ground is incredibly dry. And it's like, what, how? Yeah, uh, I have only empathy. Yeah. But from um, a distance, though, because now I live in California and it's a Mediterranean climate here. So not to rub it in or anything. Um, but yeah, it's, so the funding is lined up for all of the yeah. um, modifications. And um, I think, yeah, I think we're just, we just, uh, I know that this week is when the paperwork will get uh, delivered that is and correct. done and it should be an easy discussion at the board level for ORI to, to fund it um, and get it to happen. Um, and then, then the hard part is, uh, is kind of, I think if, if, we're, if we're wanting to include universities and students, what we found is, um, is all of the things that, that you and all of your people there already know. And that is that, um, Working with universities requires some some patience and some persistence and some consistency, and it has to fit in with their particular pedagogy and student plans and blah blah blah. So yeah. if you want to tackle universities, uh, you should because that's one of the missions that we have, um, you know. But like independent researchers and hobbyists and enthusiasts and and also people that want to. Um, use this opportunity to work on open source software in order to like uh, build up a, a better career. We are all in on that too. Um, but the outreach and, and you know, uh, communications required to, to talk to people that are interested in that is, 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 can be very time consuming. It's a, you know, you just have to keep, keep at it. It's one of those things that, that it's a cumulative victory yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we we will be focusing on a few of our outreach parts as part of part of all this once yeah. we get the lab up and running but yeah 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 i i so i'm here to help and just don't give up it's a it it's a it requires an awful lot of repetitive uh iterative outreach in order to to make the 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 uh resource known um and then there, as you can see from today's discussion, there's a steep learning curve at every step in almost oh, yeah. every direction. So, so it's you know, it's just you approach it with some joy and enthusiasm, and I think I think you've already got those things down, um, and and you're you're already uh, well versed and and uh, competent in that. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. think we're going to be able to build not just a FPGA. Uh, sort of nexus another a station very similar to what we have 
already in the UK and in uh, San Diego, but the the Remote Labs South also has a, a biomedical um, lab planned as well. So um, that's a completely different type of uh, endeavor, but we're we're very committed to, to seeing that happen and very excited about it. So there's been some discussion about the physical physical plant requirements for a um, bio for a bacteriophage or uh, any other biological or or agricultural work. Um, and that brings us to fundraising. So there are some some funds, uh, some some grants that we are targeting. Uh, these are it's government and public money that we're we're looking at. And one of them is anything innovative in agriculture, which I think we're 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 looking at in terms of uh, bacteriophage with respect to um, fish farms. So what we would really like to do is instead of nuking the poor fish with more and more antibiotics uh, for all of the different bacterial infections that plague uh, fish farms, and there's a growing uh, problem there, that instead of using uh, you know, uh, this arms race with antibiotics, that we try a cocktail of bacteriophage. And kind of the benefit of doing this is that, that fish are cheaper to work with than humans. Um, in the past, most of our volunteers that work on the bacteria, bacteriophage or the biomed type uh, side of the house have, have really wanted to target humans and human trials. And that turns out to be extraordinarily expensive because of the regulatory Wait. environment. And it's at least several million just to get off the ground with a, a team of three people doing the work. So we don't have a million dollars for that, but we do have enough money to to tackle a problem that is arguably just as um, pressing, and that is feeding people and feeding vulnerable people. So fish farms around the world um, can really feed a lot of people. So back, you know, looking at the problems of, of fish farms and, and whether or not a bacteriophage cocktail can work, we can actually set up an uh, aquaponics greenhouse or um, you know, a very small commercial style fish farm, uh, especially in Arkansas. I think that the climate is really well suited to this and there's already existing farms that we might be able to collaborate with and UAMS uh, might be interested in this. Um, and we do have a bacteriophage uh, uh, initiative or institute here at, at UCSD uh, at the University of California at San Diego. They went on hiatus with COVID and have not really come out of it yet, but they know about us and any day <laughs> we're hoping that it becomes a little more active. So uh, nice. so anyway, that's one of the things that, that we are interested in. in seeing if it can happen at, at Remote Lab South is to also add essentially a wet lab for bacteriophage work. Yeah, we've got some space that we're considering specifically for that purposes, for those purposes. Cool. And cool. we're very excited to begin work on that project and to expand uh, ORI's different methods and different fields of research even further. Yeah, I'm excited about it. The um, There's at least two FDA grants that are open right now. Um, and we don't have to to leap for these. It's just proof that we're on the right track. There's there's one on innovative farming that might uh, help fund some work to get to kickstart uh, the bacteriophage for for fish farms. But there's another one that's uh, these are these are grants that happen uh, fairly routinely. But for um, a grant available for a workshop or conference. And so I'd like to to propose that we really seriously think about either a workshop or a small conference, either in Little Rock or somewhere else, uh, I think Little Rock would work, um, for, for gathering together uh, scientists and, and engineers that wanna work on this. Um, so if we have a focused sort of, sort of scientific conference or scientific workshop, there are, there's money available through, um, right, it looks like either the Department of Agriculture or FDA or or NSF. So as soon as possible, uh, what I'll do is I'll send you the the proposal or the the request for for proposals um, for the the conference and see what you think. And it, if we can't hit this one by the deadline, then we should look for the next one, and and try to start putting together a conference or workshop. It does not have to be large. 
um, to be effective. Um, but I think we could could make a good, uh, yeah, we could make a, a, a solid, authentic proposal for for this sort of work, um, and it would be competitive, I think. So that's the that's the general idea for that side of the house. I, I definitely agree that we will that we are in a position where we can make a competitive, legitimate, compelling argument about what we can do here. Cool. And I'm excited to see what all we can do with all that. Okay. Well, today I will send you the um, the details on those two requests, their solicitations for for grants, um, and then we'll we'll see what we can do uh, to try to to put together a decent proposal. It'll probably take at least the in order to really do this right we'll need to have some some regular meetings in the short term uh to to hammer it out uh and i'll help all that i can so that'll be something that i'll i'll turn around to you guys today all right thank you for that michelle of course and i'll review the material as you send it to me thank you all right paul uh anything from you Don't think so. I've, good. I've been covering, uh, <laughs> no, no news is good news as far as out with some of this stuff, but um, everything is situation normal in the West Lab. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Your your expertise and 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 all of your help is uh, deeply appreciated. Um, could not we would not be here without you. Any uh, any thoughts on the uplink or? Uh, work there that needs to be like I, did, I think we're probably going to have to start talking about what is receiving the uplink on the on the FPGA side so the we've talked about polyphase channelizers and it's been a while since we demonstrated the polyphase filter bank stuff um, any thoughts there or too early I have not given any thought to that lately <laughs> All right, I'm thinking about it, but I, I think we're in decent shape. I know that the Theseus cores uh, will have to be modified because it targets the 7045 instead of what we've got, but the code's good. Uh, there is a known bug um, with a number of channels. So the the implementation, the last time I talked to the Theseus cores people, this will for those of you listening, this is what receives the uplink. It's a frequency division multiple access uplink, and it needs to be received that way. And then digitized or decoded, demodulated, decoded, and then multiplexed. But you know, you first you have to receive it. And uh, we believe that the best way to do that is with the polyphase channelizer. And we do have a solid open source code base to work from, but it's going to have to be ported to our, our system. And there's an interesting bug the last time that we worked with this. And so I, I apologize if it's already been fixed. Uh, but it limited the number of channels to like eight and above that weird stuff happened so we should be aware that there might be um a raw channel limit that we need to address and it might require some backing up and looking at what happened so it could have already been fixed but i that was the it was a very interesting and, and somewhat subtle thing that really kind of wrecked anything above eight channels and we will definitely be requiring more than eight channels um so that's all I know about that. So it's that's well, well past today. <laughs> it will not be something that we, and it's honestly not something that we'll look at before August. So, all right, that's all I got. Anybody else with anything? Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for everybody that's uh, that's listening uh, for your support and positive vibes. It makes all the difference in the world, and we're looking forward to. Uh, being able to share videos of things working and it's a, a delightful project to work on and and we hope that it brings a lot of joy to people that use it all right see you on slack